black and white abstract architecture. In this video I'm going to look at black and white abstract architecture and just how I edited all four images to get a set that were very similar. I'm going to edit two of the images and that's because on the second image there is a sun flare. All these images were shot handheld so there might be a slight blur in them as well but hopefully you'll forgive me for that but they're all shot handheld and as I said there's a slight sun flare in the second image and it's just to show you how I dealt with that. The black and white really helps deal with it but it's just to show you how I dealt with that to get these images. I'll also add a frame to each image. All these images are handheld images and I've removed a few of the people and a few of the other distractions in the image before going into the luminar stage. I did that in Photoshop for these ones. So without further ado, let's dive right in. So that's it in the luminar just now and to get it started, I'm just gonna dive right in. Quite a quick video for this one here just to give you the idea. So the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to get into color and I'm going to push saturation for a change because I want to increase the blues because of what I'm going to do later. So 16 will be fine for that. I'm then going to get into the light and I'm going to get into smart contrast and just pull that up ever so slightly. Yep, nice difference there. Before, after. So that's quite good so far. I'll jump back into the light once I've sorted the entire image. Then going to get into AI Enhance. And if I push the Sky Enhancer, it increases the blues, which again will help with what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take that, just taking a mid-ground 50. And then I am going to get into AI Accent, just to push the details on the building here. And again, before, after, before, after. Subtle changes, but subtle enough to be seen. Next one, AI Structure. Yes, these are global edits, it will affect the entire image but I'm not too worried about what's happening here because it'll add to the image later. Then we go into the black and white conversion. So I'm just going to straight away can click convert to black and white and that alone with the greys and the darks in here, that's quite a nice image as it is, but we're going to do more to it. So because I increased the blues, I'm going to pull the woman into the blues right back. And what that will do is that will give me a graduation in here, nearly black up here. We will just check. So you can see that that's not pure black up here, but yet in here it is. Because that's such a small part of the image, I'm not going to bother about it too much. So that has now got a nice dark sky where we can show the contrast in here. And you can still be looking at the image, you can still see the contrast between there and there. But we're going to deal with that as well. What I'm going to do is go in and just play around with the details slightly. Push them again. And then I'm going to push the medium details slightly. So we're just building up the image. So, so far, from there to there. And you may have a preference to colour, but for me, these ones worked best in black and white. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get back into the light. And I'm going to push the smart contrast a tiny bit more. So straight away, you can see the difference there. Again, quite happy with that. Next thing I'm going to do is I want to emphasise this area here. So there's two or three different ways to do it, but I'm going to go with what I consider to be the quickest way within this, is I'm going to go in here and duplicate the layer. That's it. Then I'm going to get into the light. Again, the Essentials panel and into the light, and I'm going to push the exposure slightly. Again, not too much. I don't want it to be too much. So you can see more details appeared here. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and paint this area back in. So if I go in here, back into the layers, I can edit the mask for that layer. I've only used the light, the essentials panel here and push the exposure. So I'm going to use the brush. I could use the radial, uh, but I feel for this one, the brush would give me a quicker effect. So I'm on paint, opacity 50, the default, and I'm just going to paint in here. Yes, it will bleed onto the sky slightly, but I can zoom in 
and take that back out. You can actually see it beginning to affect the sky now, just at the edge of the building here. So that's us there. There was a tiny bit up there that I quite liked. And I've got that in there as well. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go into Erase. And I'm going to take the brush size down. And I'm going to paint back in here. And when I do that, I'm just going to be as quick as I possibly can. Just so that that takes that out there. If it goes onto the building slightly, that's fine. That's fair enough for this edit. If I flick that layer off, you'll see the difference. And you'll notice as well that it's affected this area here. So what I'm going to do here is take the opacity up to 100 and I'm going to erase what happened up here. So that's it there. Just subtle again. Next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add a new image layer. And for this new image layer, I've created a white frame. So I'm just going to choose that and click open. And the white frame drops in. And you'll notice it's different dimensions because it's adjusted to fit the image. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go in and choose lighting and we can see what's happened here. So the next thing is layer transform. And this is different because it's on the PC and I'm going to have to guess here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the border so that it's visually what I think is correct. So it'll probably be wrong, but I'm going to try and keep them equidistant all the way around. And you'll notice that I don't have the padlock locked in place. So I'm going to take that over to there. And that looks about right for that one. And take it over to here. And that looks about the same all the way around. So I'm going to click it done. Again, jumping back and forward. It looks okay. It's slightly too much here. And that is quite close to the top. So if I just flick that... On and off, still quite close to the top anyway. I'm going to call this one done, and then I'm going to jump on to the next one. Okay, this is the second edit in the last one. I'll show you what I'm going to do with the rest after this, and that will just be very, very quickly. So we're going to follow the same process as the first one. I'm going to go into the colour and push the saturation so that the sky becomes more saturated for a change. I'm then going to go into the light and I'm going to push the smart contrast to deal with these areas here. And the highlights I'm going to lift in this case for this one. Next, AI Enhance, Sky Enhancer again, Accent. So you can see more blue coming in around here. AI Structure, push that as well. Again, these are global edits, so you may have noticed a slight arc in here appearing. I'll take that back ever so slightly. AI structure. I'm then going to go in to black and white. Straight away, convert to black and white. So that, for me, is quite a nice image as it sits. But I don't know if you can see, but down here, there is a slight flare. Now, to go in and take that out with all those details would take a little bit of time on the software. So I'm going to show you how to deal with that in this style of edit for this. Right, and then I'm going to pull the blue right back. So there we have the black sky. This will emphasize this. So if you keep your eyes on this, although you're looking at the rest of the image. I'm going to get into the details enhancer and I'm going to push the small details. Not too far. Medium details very slightly. And I'm actually going to pull these back to about there. So that, again, is quite strong. Still, this is in play. Next thing, I'm going to get into advanced contrast. I'm going to lift the highlights slightly. And we'll just check the balance of them. And just take it to about there. Right, mid-tones. I'm going to lift them. And the reason I am lifting them, if you look at these lines here from the structure, they're coming into play more. If I take that back, they're coming into play even more. And I'll just take that further that way. Pull it back. There, right. Shadow contrast. I'm going to take that up. And each time... I am watching here. I'm watching what's going on with the rest of the image, but I'm watching down here in particular. So if I take the balance to just too far there, if I take the balance to about there. Although it's still noticeable, on screen, it's not just as noticeable. 
if you were to print this, it probably would show up. But I think we've done not a bad job of dealing with that just now. So I'm quite happy with the effect that that's had. And I've another two images to apply this to. So what I'm going to do is go into looks and I'm going to go save new look. As you notice, I've already got it down here. So I'll just rename this one as I'll name this one Architecture Black and White 2. So that's that now saved down here. Turn the looks back off, back into this one, and I am going to go into the crop tool, and I'm going to change this to free, and I'm going to bring that down to around about there, remembering I'm still to put a border in this, and I am going to click done. New layer, a new image layer. Again, I'm going to add the frame, click open, change it to lighten, it's out slightly, so back into layer transform. And again, we're judging this by our eyes. So I'm going to take it to around there. And if my eyes are wrong, feel free to put it down in the comments below. But it's just for the purposes of this video. And I'll click done. So there we go. There's the second image done already. And next thing to do is click apply. Hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully you managed to pick up something from that. It's nothing new editing in black and white at all, but hopefully just to let you see how I created the set from these images. As you notice, I also added a frame to these as well. And you'll also notice that because I'm working on a PC, when I went into the layer adjustment options, the layer blending mode disappeared. So it was guessed at the distance and how it would affect the image. If the distance is off on either side of the frames, I apologise, it's just I'm trying to get through this really quick for you. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and a big thumbs up if you did. If you'd like to check out more of the videos in the channel, please check them out below. And if you're currently not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because that would be greatly appreciated. Remember, stay safe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.